know, I'm a little leery about talking about this because this is a public forum and you never know who's watching. But let me say that, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, they all have that same effect. You know, you go out, you party, you might smoke a joint or you might do a line of cocaine or I don't know what you guys are up to. I know I'm not doing that, but I don't know what you guys are up to. But if you're out there doing that, then um, that's also going to make you feel bad. Um, I never used to understand why there were fat cocaine addicts. <laughs> you know, like your John Belushi's and uh, what's the other guy? Um, uh, Chris Hart Farley. He was also like, did a lot of blow. Um, I never understood why how people could be fat and do cocaine because it you know it curbs your appetite, but you know it curbs your appetite while you're doing it. But then you know once you've sobered up, again and and probably because it's been combined with alcohol, you want to take on a lot of you need to take a lot of carbs on board. You know you need to like fix that. You know you're depressed. Your your brain's all messed up. So you you need that that starchy sugary you know, love <laughs> to kind of fix you, um, or at least that's what you think. So now I understand why there's fat cocaine addicts. So, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and, and what I want to say last is that when it comes to food for me, it's the trickiest because I love to cook and I grew up, you know, I'm a black woman. I grew up in black family where Food is love, and this is true of many families, uh, many people in America, all people of all races, whatever. But in black families, especially, and I'm sure people in you know Latin families, uh, Italian families can understand that it's a little bit, you know, it's kind of turned up to eleven. Like it's food is love, and food is always being pushed on you, and not only food is being pushed on you but it's really in my culture a lot of the times prepared in a really bad way um a delicious way but um, a really unhealthful way so my challenge because i grew up that way and because i do love food i love to cook and i love um like i would you know i would have i would love to have been a chef you know i love cooking that much and I used to have a dessert company, so I like to bake and do all these different things. So the food has been tricky. I got rid of the sugar and the the, the white stuff, and that's been really good. Um, but I still like food to taste really, really good, and that's really important for me. And that's a pleasure that I'm not willing to give up. Um, I don't want it to be so good um, that it triggers an addictive response but um, I want it to be really really delicious um, and then but what I realized is being so good that it triggers an addictive response has to do with things other than flavor it has to do with the white sugar and the and the flour and the additives like the you know the um, the flavor enhancers and you know the, the excitotoxins. I don't know if you know about excitotoxins, but they're um, it's what aspartame is a, a excitotoxin, and it basically just lights up the areas of your brain that make you like want more, more, more. So I realized that I could have all of my deliciousness without any of the um, the toxins, the excitotoxins, and the the additives and the the highly refined uh, foods that make me addictive. So that's been a really powerful thing for me to learn. And to all you people out there that think that you you know you can't have fried chicken and you can't have macaroni and cheese and you can't have like barbecue and you can't have teriyaki and you can't have all those like yummy things that you like, it's not true. You can have all of those things and lose weight. And I've learned how to make really delicious really really delicious and decadent food um, that's really healthful so all that information is out there this is the age of the internet if you want to learn how to cook um, yummy food in a healthful way it's out there and you know I know Rocco Despirito has a book out um, but there's you know there's so many ways to do it 
Um, there's so many little tricks that you can do and still have, you know, your cake and eat it too, so to speak. And again, one of my big tricks is whaling. So this, this has saved me. Like I, I love sweet, um, I love like barbecue sauce and teriyaki sauce and kind of a, you know, sweet sauce. And that's something that I had to give up because I was not having sugar, but now I can have that occasionally. Um, you know, if I use Waylo for the sweet sweetener. Um, I've just recently learned about something called the halo effect, um, which is, you can, I'm gonna put a link below to the video of the girl who's talking about it. Uh, and also put a link to some articles that kind of talk about it. But the food industry, um, chain restaurants specifically, um, have this ratio of fat, sugar, and salt that they put in your food to elicit an addictive response in you. So I just think that we should be aware of these kinds of things so that we don't beat ourselves up for having this type of addictive reactions. I mean, the, the food industry is out to get us. I mean, they want to make money. They want us to come back. So they're, they're pumping their food full of um, all kinds of additives and they're using you know chemicals and chemical equations to keep us addicted um, any chain restaurant like a Chili's or a Cheesecake Factory I just found out that you know if you ordered say the chicken wings like buffalo wings those chicken wings are fried before they even reach the restaurant and then the restaurant fries them again and then like puts whatever sauce on them um, also, all the meat used in, at chain restaurants, all of the chicken and, and, and beef is injected with like sugar and, and all kinds of different salt solutions before it even arrives at the restaurant. Their suppliers do this and um, it creates what's called the halo effect, which just makes you sort of put you in this pleasure coma and, and will trigger you wanting that food again. I mean, it's... It's very complicated and you know, I should not explain it as clearly as I can, as I could, I'm sure, but you should just know that there are other, there are forces out there um, that are conspiring to keep you fat. Um, things that you don't even know about. So it's really important to just try to prepare your own food as much as possible. Try to know what's going in your food. Stay away from, you know, fast food and processed food as, as much as you can, you know, like the big chains, try to stay away from them. I mean, I know you can't always do that, but, you know, make it an exception, not a rule to eat that kind of food. And, um, you, you know, I think that you will see that, you know, you get a little bit more sanity in your life and it's, you're, you don't feel like this like you're on autopilot about food and about drinking and about everything. You just need to take it out and see what happens. Don't be afraid of of that want, that jonesing, that withdrawal. Don't be afraid of that. It's it can be a high in and of itself. That's what I've learned. That's the other thing. Like when I also started calorie restricting and I would get really hungry, I would look at the the hunger and try to flip it into like a high. Like, this is my body, you know, reducing. This is my body letting go of weight. This is a positive thing, like, this feels good. So, um, you know, your brain, your, 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 your mental game is really important here. And, um, but it's only gonna be as strong as you know, your diet basically is like you just clean up your diet, clean up what you're putting into your body, and you will become really powerful, very powerful. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, on the exercise front, lately I've just been feeling really, really, really good from exercising, like really, like just positive and and hopeful and strong and you know. Um, just like I can do whatever I want and it's coming from exercise and I think people should really make a point to emphasize that exercise not only will help you lose weight but 
it makes you feel really good. It's a drug in and of itself, and it's a great drug, and it makes you um, feel like that you can accomplish anything and do anything, and um, keeps a smile on your face, and um, it allows you to deal with bad stuff in a more um, constructive way. So exercise is wonderful. It takes a while to get to that level, but it comes in. Again, I only exercise from 30 minutes to an hour a day, but lately I've been doing more close to an hour, which is interesting. But um, even with that 30 minutes a day that I started out with, I got there. Um, so now I kind of need to exercise. I'm in a little bit, not, I want to say tick tick, cause, but I, I like how I feel. I like, I haven't felt this much clarity and, um, this much positivity in a long time so um, again another rambling video from Defy but you know what are you gonna do so uh, that's it I don't know <laughs> I hope that you got something positive out of this and I hope you have a fantastic and beautiful day I like a bottle of gin Oh la 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 la, that's the state I'm in I wish I had some bitches brew So I could do what we bitches do